what you are seeing is something that's supposed to be impossible. I've been learning chemistry for only a few hours, but I already know more than most grown-ups. What we learn is beautiful, amazing, and essential for our future. They learn what makes up the world, the unseen architecture within all things. What else could be more important? And what you are seeing is how learning should be. My purpose is to prove something that I've always believed, that kids can do anything. I teach college science to kids because it's a way to show the world what's really possible. Within this room, there just might be a genius who, with a great discovery, will save us all one day. Biochemistry is a study of life at high resolution, at its most fundamental level. It answers the most basic and the most complex questions about life. What are we made of? Why do we breathe? How do we see? How do we design our medicine to save a sick person's life? For the first time in history, the answers to these questions are known, but only by a few. We can change that. My students learn chemistry in a way that is completely unique, as something that can be seen and touched. We interpret elaborate visualizations and build intricate models to grasp the molecular reality that underlies our living world. To design a class where kids could learn to such incredible depth and at such speed, I needed absolute creative freedom, technical knowledge, and vast amounts of time. It's probably something that no one has ever been able to do before. But the most important thing that allows my students to succeed is my belief that they can. Hydrogen, how many protons does a hydrogen obviously have? One and then one electron, right? So positive and negative, they balance again, right? Teaching college chemistry to third graders. Sounds crazy, right? But that's what we are seeing right now. My name is Dr. Dan Freed, and I'm an assistant professor of chemistry at St. Peter's University. One thing that I've noticed about K-12 education is that it seems to have gotten stuck somewhere. The kind of learning that I experienced in the 90s, I don't feel like right now there's a huge difference qualitatively or quantitatively in what I experienced, but science has advanced a great deal in those last 20 years or so. What you guys are holding is one of the most important industrial chemicals. This molecule is used to make something called polyethylene. It's ethylene, but it's gonna make polyethylene and polyethylene is what all of our plastic stuff's made out of. I became interested in teaching high-level chemistry to young students as a result of a program that I taught at Yale University teaching realistic drawing to elementary school students using a drawing technique that was developed by an art educator named Betty Edwards. I was able to show that very young students could learn realistic drawing extremely rapidly. Within just a couple hours, students could move from kind of a very juvenile style of drawing to a quite sophisticated style of drawing. As I started to realize what the implications of this were, I began to think, as a scientist, can I apply something like this method to the sciences? The fact that we were introducing college level material at a third, fourth, and fifth grade level, um, I really wasn't sure if the students were going to be able to grasp the concepts. How are they going to understand uh, Lewis dot structures? How are they going to understand uh, molality? And you know, how are they going to even understand the periodic table? Because I used to teach middle school science and also high school science, and the periodic table is scary. So we initially started with a, a pilot lesson for one class and I sat in on the class and I could just see the children liven up. They were so excited and immediately through the use of the 3D models and the 3D software, the students were able 
to gain a better understanding. For them to actually understand it is amazing, and that's where most of my skepticism was lying, the fact that will they actually be able to do this? Will this knock their confidence? And it did the exact opposite. It actually built up their confidence. What makes up the world? What are we made of? How do we understand the life processes? How do enzymes facilitate biochemical reactions? These are the things that people should know. Every kid should graduate from, honestly, from fifth grade, knowing the answers, or at least having a sense of some of these answers. Unfortunately, it's very hard to probably find even an adult who could tell you what an enzyme is. How does even the most basic biochemistry process occur? This is a question of scientific literacy, and it's something that is easily solved now that we've developed this curriculum. Bringing college level materials into an elementary school, we don't have any of that. This is the first of its kind. The uniqueness of this program is that we're taking something that's meant for college students and we're bringing it to third, fourth, and fifth grade students. And I don't like the term bringing it down because we're not watering it down. It's still the same curriculum, it's still the same rigor, it's still the same assessments that are used for college students, and we're bringing it to students in grades three, four, and five. Students can be exposed and, and can have a greater understanding of college level material if it provides hands-on learning, inquiry-based learning, and, and using strategies to help younger children learn the concepts. Before I was the assistant principal of this particular school, I was the science supervisor for all the K-8 schools. So I've been in a lot of schools throughout Jersey City, and I find that here, you know, we have an opportunity to really expand STEM for students that are not necessarily students that would be involved in STEM careers and opportunities, students from underrepresented populations. So at this point, I've taught something like 200 individual classes over the last four years. So it's really been an amazing experience to work in a variety of schools with a variety of learners in all different cities across the, the New York area. And one unifying concept I see again and again is the readiness for the younger students to learn this material. And as the age increases, it becomes actually quite difficult to teach them and as adults, we have the most extreme case where it's very, very hard to teach college chemistry and college science. So it's actually pretty ironic that college chemistry is taught to the population that is almost the least prepared to learn it. The most prepared students are the third grade and under age class. And it's really something incredible. And when you show people these results, they say, oh yeah, little kids are sponges. Everyone knows that little kids are sponges. So why don't we act on that little saying? Why don't we introduce these very high level science concepts to the, the youngest students, the ones that are most interested and most excited to learn? And honestly, that are probably the most capable of learning because they're the youngest, their, their brains are still developing, they're still uh, forming what interests them. The excitement of the children, when children were exclaiming, ooh, ah. Some of the changes that I've seen in the students is the aha moment, that like, wow, I get this, I, I'm understanding something. The fact that children were able to answer high level questions uh, in terms of biochemistry, and Dr. Freed would tell them, some of my college students don't know this material. So that for me was so exciting for the children to know, hey, you could do this, and the excitement that I saw really lit me up. I've also noticed that certain students that have been like um, recluse, they, they're more outgoing now. They, they seem to want to engage more. They're extremely excited about science. They can't wait to come down to the class. So I noticed that more students are engaged and more students, not, they think now that they can actually be part of the quote unquote elite sciences. The fact that I have parents telling me how much their children are learning about biochemistry, the enthusiasm and excitement that I see on the children's faces, and actually the responses to, to the answers to the questions. My first impression of the program, I thought maybe he, he won't be able to handle it. It's kind of not really. But I did handle it. I saw that he was learning and um, he was talking about it at home. It looks like whatever is being done here, it's working. He's picking up information and he's uh, able to retain it. And That's uh, why I'm going to be a scientist when I grow up. Now he really wants to do science. Like he's always talking about the molecules or he talks about what different things he's doing. It's really fun and since it's advanced, like you get to be ready when you actually learn it in higher grades. So one of the main purposes of this program is to train future scientists and future citizens who are scientifically literate. 
A major problem is that we're graduating individuals from K-12 and even from college who don't have any scientific literacy. I named my program Biochemistry Literacy for Kids because I'm really interested in allowing them to have a command of the subject, not just simply uh, an ability to answer test questions. They should really own the subject and be able to start answering and, and asking questions by themselves. So one uh, very kind of uh, troublesome aspect of this kind of curriculum development work is the resistance that you often get when you try to approach uh, schools with uh, kind of quite revolutionary ideas. There doesn't seem to be a place in many schools for this kind of development and this kind of project. So what I'd like to see out of this project is to help change people's minds about what young learners are capable of. I think that we have made it abundantly clear that third, fourth, and fifth graders can be learning at a much, much higher level than is sort of expected of them. And that's really the main takeaway from this program. We want to start to change the world of education and make things much, much better, much more advanced, and give students the tools to reach their full potential. Guys, this special shake is called a tetrahedron. Can you say this name for me, tetrahedron? Tetrahedron! It's something that has four things sticking out at equal angles. That's a tetrahedron, like a pyramid, right? Yes, yeah. Why don't you put a white? That, okay, she had a great question. We're gonna put a white in a second. So guys, remember we saw before, that this is like, this guy's kind of rich, right? Yeah. He's got two extra electrons he doesn't know what to do with, right? Yeah. So what about if a lonely little proton comes across with no hydrogens? What do you think is going to happen? Uh -huh. He's going to give one away. So what do we want to have happen next? In this program, we've piloted a science learning unit with 70 students for six weeks, and we've had amazing results. In just a four or five hours of instruction, we already have students understanding concepts that are normally taught in college senior classrooms or maybe even graduate school. But what we need is more support. We need recognition from the outside about what students are really capable of. And we need someone to step up and offer resources to allow this project to reach its full potential. We need partners on the outside, both in New Jersey and maybe even at the national level, to allow this project to reach its full potential. My goal from something like this is not only the benefit of the students of PS30, but the idea of setting some kind of standard about how we deliver instruction, how we get students excited, how we make sure that what we are doing is relevant um, and beyond 21st century, I think we should start now looking at 22nd century, and I think that this is setting a model for that. They see that science can actually be fun. The most exciting thing about this program is just the fact that they're getting exposed to chemistry, biochemistry at such an early age. I can't wait to see it go beyond what it is right now. We really believe that like, if you give students the opportunity, if you give them the chance, they will excel. I really believe that the advanced pedagogy and the new style of learning that we've developed in these classes can be applied to many other subjects within and also outside of STEM, and it's something that could really change the world of education.